The basics is collaboration. This is the tool to collect. This is all, everything we talked about is in this tool. All the legislation, all the properties, everything, what you define, everything you do. But this is a tool for clients and contractors to collect information on the actual built building and um, products, everything going into the uh, product. So this is a European platform, so here I have language. So this is a tool where you can invite a company by clicking invite. And then I invite either my supplier or my subcontractor or my contractor, depending on who you are. So by inviting, I just write something like... Um, um, Optimera. Sorry, Optimeres. That is wrong. Sorry, invite company. Sorry, I'm in the English business. Uh, I'm in the English business um, area, so I'm not in the Norwegian. But I invite the company, and then an email is sent, and I'm linked. Today, fifty thousand projects have are doing this. So then you're inviting, and then based on that, you have your invited companies in this in a list. This is who I invited. And when they then um, go in, we have uh, automated, we have created a web service where you can integrate you, you with the, uh, with, the with the, um, let's say, the ED, EDI, EDI data. Uh, and that is what you actually purchase. So that means that if you have a Google map, as we speak, a lot of data is moved. Foom, 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 now. And it's going every minute. From Alcel, Bigmacher, Maxbo, Wirt, Mutek, whoever. This data is just flowing around what you actually purchase. The alternative way of doing it is actually to search and add to my project manual. Or we have a solution for this... Um, iPhone, you can scan and add. You have to add what you're actually installing. That has to be done. Most of it now is done automatically. So if you are a supplier, you can just deliver this information automatically, seamlessly. So that means that if Startspig, are they here today? Yeah, are Startspig? <laughs> they could invite, let's say, Skanska. And Skanska would invite their subcontractors, which they actually do not know until they have uh, subcontracted them. And then they would maybe invite a painter, which would invite Malorama, which is a, a wholesaler selling paint. So when the painter goes into the store, this, his information is automatically collected. Same thing with a plumber. He would go to Alcel, or an, is Alcel here today? Yeah, there you are. So all cell is de delivering information to the plumber on actually what's, what, what he's buying. And this is done automatically. This is very important to understand. Automatically information. So this ends up in a list here. Products, 30. And these are the products installed. These are products. Mm, where is it? So today, uh, you will know the product name, who the manufacturer is, when it's added. And here are some warnings. This is warnings on products that are missing documents that you have set up in your assessment. This is what I want. So let, let's say that I would like to have an, uh, a document type. If you don't get it, you'll get this sign, missing document. And 
from there, now I have a tool to collect the, the proper information. I have a possibility to set up my requirements either on chemicals or on products. So this is, a chemical, this is just the example. If any, if, any product, if any product is fatally swallowed, this is a chemical, let me know. Let me know. Tell me. Then I instantly I will be told that now you're in breach. So you get a red cross on your product. That's it for the for the um, uh, people working in the, pro in the project, and they can get that on their mobile phone or via the web. We can also deliver that information to the merchant. So the merchant can actually have a knowledge when he actually sells something that eh, this is breaching, something is missing. But who is providing the information? At, is it all sell? Not always. It's they purchase products from how many suppliers do you have in Alcel? 3,000? Yeah. yeah. 3,000 manufacturers. So they are the ones that actually hold the information. And that is where the information comes from. It is actually imported to EU or the manufacturer. But this is how it's done, and this is, we've been doing this since 2001, so anyone using product to change would just say yes, yes. And now the new stuff is that we can configure data requirements for specific product types. So I can start and go in and configure my data requirements in a system. <clears throat> I can edit and I can set my requirements uh, in my organization. I can now choose to say um, what kind of information I'd like, air permeability, and I can just tick off and tick off and set my requirements. This is the Excel spreadsheet I showed. In Excel, it's easier because you understand it. So here you actually set what you want. This is your data requirements. So let's say, starts big. In this case, I'm uh, using Skanska. Set what they want. For a manufacturer's point of view, how should you be able to get that information or that data requirement? So then I'll go into our system. It's called GoBIM. You can switch into Norwegian. In GoBIM, um, you have your normal data, what you have today, the get in, the name of the product, whatever. And then you automatically now can get more information. What kind of data requirements do Statsbyg have? Skanska and others. What kind of information are they asking for? So I'll just show. Um, so now, mm -mm. I'll let me do it in English. If I want to, to add a product, I can do it and then I define what kind of product I um, have. So if I have, a, this is um, a wall hung wash basin. That's a toilet. Uh, I will now get my data requirements here. If I tick off, now I have a long list. These are data which is relevant for your product. This is only for your product. So it's not like everything in the world. This is relevant for you because it's linked to the standards. So everything here is relevant for you. This is EPD data, this is environmental data, this is the product data template. So based on this, you could add information. This is the data that comes from the standards. And if I now click Skanska, what happens? I'll get Skanska's requirements. 
Now the list is not that long. This is what Skanska want. On their projects, on your product. This is the data requirement. But maybe the market is bigger than that, so maybe I'd like to say I'd like also to deliver everything which is in IFC or Revit. So I can tick IFC. Here is the Building Smart Data Dictionary. Here is interruptibility. The same property is mentioned in the standard and in Revit and in IFC. It is the same thing. You fill the information and then we can turn it around, talk to all the Revit users. We have a Revit plugin, Archicad, whoever. That information is translated into system languages and languages. So I can say that now I'd like to have it in 10 or three different Scandinavian languages and these Revit, Archicad, or Skanska, or starts big requirements on that object or that product. If I'm a contractor and I like to purchase products, we have a lot of contractors as clients. How can I do that? I can set my data requirements, the specification for that window, and I can use IFC, and I can automatically then create a process. As soon as I get the IFC file from the architect, I can automatically, within an instance of a second, have these data requirements for that manufacturer to fill in. It, does, it wouldn't take time. It would take... And then I take one model, two models, three models, four models, five models. How many models do you have? Depends on how big you are. These kind of things will happen. That means that manufacturers will have to respond digital to these requests that is coming out in the market. This is just one example of using data. So what I'll do, I'll just fill out this information. Then I know that I'm complying to standards. I give uh, information the market wants. And I can choose myself what kind of data I would like to share. It's up to you. So we had, uh, before, we, before I end up, uh, we, had, um, uh, we have a client now. We have many clients. But most of them are working with big uh, software systems called SAP, SAP. Have you heard about this? Yeah. These big, big systems. So they have information, or they have big PIMs. So they have information in systems in languages and everything is sorted. But how can you communicate with Revit users, Archicad users? How can you translate? And how do you know that the language is using is actually the proper language defined by the French government or defined by any client? So this is what the tool actually does. It helps you. So it just gives you the data set to fill out so that anyone that wants this data can get it, the right data at the right time. Now, 